Well, good morning, everybody. Please say prayers for no rain. Rain at 1 o'clock. That sounds perfect. Today is rally day. We have a crepe truck, so we're going to put on our French hats. Crepe truck. And we also have a sausage food truck that have changed their menu for us. We're so special. So they're going to have extra special breakfasty stuff, but they also will have hot dogs. So, you know, both. We're also going to have glitter tattoos, so I get a brand new tattoo. Very exciting. And uh, hey, Mr. Jude. And uh, we can dress up and take photos. So there's going to be just great stuff happening after church. So go out and have a blast outside and rally day. Um, we also have our earbud fundraiser. The preschool is asking the church to support them uh, by donating some money so that they can do an earbud raffle. And it's Powerbeats Pro earphones. They're um, $199. So we're hoping to be able to buy two sets and raffle those off for manipulatives. I tell people, I did not go to seminary to teach so I don't really know what manipulatives are. But it's hilarious, because we have a lot of teachers in our congregation, and they're like, ooh, I can tell you what they are. So I'm learning, I'm learning, but manipulatives are very, very important, so we're gonna get new ones. Um, so just, uh, it, there are envelopes in your pews, if you just wanna write on their preschool or earbuds, we'll know where the money is supposed to go. <coughs> All right, those are my Announcements for today. I just want to welcome everyone to our worship. Welcome visitors. There are green sheets in your pews. If you want to write down your name and number, we'll make sure uh, to contact you. Also, welcome to those online. Glad that you can worship with us today. And now I want to invite Kevin Couric and Mary Hetrick to come on up and tell us about Covenant Bible Study. My name is Mary Hetrick. And good morning, my name is Kevin Curick. And we both here are inviting you to an exciting weekly Bible study this fall that you can experience here at St. Paul's in person and online. Some of you may remember that we did this uh, 24 eight week session, uh, I think it was in 2014. So Covenant Bible Study is an in-depth, small group experience with a daily Bible reading discipline. Unlike the learning that you may have experienced in other groups, this in-depth study of the whole Bible emphasizes the biblical concept of covenant as a unifying pattern through all the books in the Old and the New Testament. It emphasizes the unique relationship that God chooses, and I emphasize, God chooses to have with us as God's people. This relationship is grounded in the faithfulness of God's love and in our ongoing commitment to stay in love with God while we share signs of that love with each other. Covenant Bible study is designed so that the meaning of the Bible isn't found in merely listening to a biblical scholar which Mary and I are not <laughs> biblical scholars. But there are biblical scholars in our weekly videos that we view. The meaning of the Bible isn't merely found in listening to your own inner voice through the daily Bible passages. It is through conversation in community, in our weekly covenant group meeting experience. That's where we discover the Bible's transformative powers. We explore in the first eight weeks how a biblical covenant is created and established. It covers the stories about our origins in Genesis, the critical Exodus narrative about the freedom of God's people, the stories of our new teacher in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, and other biblical books that highlight foundational aspects of Christian belief and practice. 
So beginning on September 26th, for eight consecutive weeks, we will be meeting in the Claire Wolf Lounge from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Please be aware that we'll be following the CDC guidelines regarding COVID-19 for in-person gatherings. But if for some reason you cannot join us in person, Pastor Sammy will be assisting us with the online Zoom connection. If any adults have young children and are interested in attending, we can make arrangements for childcare. Just let us know ahead of time so if that's something you need. Well, are you thinking, gosh, this is Sunday afternoon, and what about dinner? We have you covered there, too. At the conclusion of each class, we will be treated by a light soup and supper. So still curious? Kevin can tell us now a little bit more about next Sunday and a special session called Covenant Curiosity. We are hosting this Covenant Curiosity next Sunday at 4 p.m. in the Clara Wolf Lounge upstairs to help answer any questions that you may have about this exciting study, but also not just a study, it's a relationship builder. I want you to think about that. Study and relationships. That's what Covenant is all about. There is no commitment in attending this curiosity session. Come with your questions. We'll try to answer them, get a feel for things. But again, there is no commitment, but we sure hope we hook the line and sink her in this one. Mary and I will be available after service today to answer any questions that you might have about things as well. Thank you for your time, and please consider this valuable opportunity to study the Bible while, de while developing community through covenant. Thank you. Are there any other announcements today? Yeah, Carol. For the crop walk, Carol raised over $1,231 for the crop walk. The crop walk is September 26th, so definitely after worship, come on out and we're going to walk the neighborhood. All right, well, let's calm our hearts and minds and prepare ourselves for worship with a moment of silence. I invite all of the children to come forward with their backpacks. Come on up, friends. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. All right. God of all knowledge and wisdom, bless these backpacks and each student that will carry them every day of this school year. Will you guys join me in our backpack blessing? As students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care this congregation that surrounds them each day. All right, now each one of you is also going to get a star pin that you can put on your backpacks. There you are. And we're going to bless those pins too, okay? Will you guys help me bless the pins? Receive the word of God. No, wait. God, bless these stars. Help them remind the children that we and God already think they are superstars, even when they don't feel like it. Help us encourage our children and understand the challenges and fears of failure that can come with each new year. Holy God, guide our children to do their best. Help them to make right choices and remind them that your love and presence are always with them. Fill them with curiosity, understanding, respect for their teachers, and care and compassion for other students. 
I invite Danielle and Anthel to come on up too. Hello, friends. We give thanks for teachers, administrators, and staff that work with children each and every day. Bless the backpacks and totes of the teachers and administrators of all schools. Bless nurses, guidance counselors, librarians, and all people who help children in their daily lives at school. Help them care for every student. Find the best in each and every one, and understand those who have special needs. We give them patience, give them, God, patience and strength to never give up, and assurance that you, O oh God, are always with them. May these teachers and staff be reminded that this congregation supports them in their roles and surrounds them with our love and care. In your love and mercy, surround our children and our schools with your protection, that they may be safe places for all who enter. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, now Miss Danielle is going to help us pass out some Bibles. Now, you guys, these Bibles are awesome. When I was your age, my Bibles didn't have really fun characters in them, and my Bibles didn't have fun pictures, and my Bible didn't have that amazing little flap. What? What grade are you in, friend? So we have two different kinds that the kids are going to get so that they can read the Bible, and it's got fun pictures. Um, it's yours, friend. Um, and the older ones have a magnetic flap so that it doesn't fall all apart, which mine often does. So let's go ahead and bless these Bibles. Receive the Word of God. Learn the stories and study the words of the Bible. Its stories belong to us all, and its words speak to all of us. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to God and to each other because we are the people of God. We rejoice in this step in your journey of faith with God. We pray God will guide you as you use this Bible. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's word together. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks be to God. All right, you can go on back to your seats now. Thank you so much. Love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy God, our teacher and guide, you draw, you draw us, us to, to yourself, yourself and, and welcome, welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are to be seated. Boys and girls, it's me, Miss Danielle. Today's gospel reading is Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 38. Jesus is asking the disciples, Who do you think I am? Peter says, You are the Messiah. He teaches the disciples that the elders are not going to accept him as the Messiah. They say, God knows everything. And Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross for our sins. You see, he knew Peter, one of his own disciples, was going to betray him. He even pulls Peter aside and scolds him, calling him Satan. You know what, boys and girls? In verse 34, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must say no to themselves. He goes on to say, What good is it if someone gains the whole world? but loses their soul. Boys and girls, it's easy to get wrapped up in worldly things and want stuff and follow other people. But remember, temptation is not good. Remember, Jesus doesn't care what we look like, how much money we have. It's about our actions, how we treat people and what we do every day. So will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we ask that you help us to let go of all the worldly things and that we surrender to you, our body, our soul, and all that is ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now hear the word of God through our holy scriptures. Our reading today is from the third and fourth chapters of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse, you hand, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. This was the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are invited to stand.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then, they took a, then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Who welcomes, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So today is rally day. And it's one of my favorite times of the year because, you know, first, it's a celebration. And we love to celebrate. And so we're having um, tattoos and food trucks and photo booths where we get to dress up in all these fun costumes. And we're going to have tons of games. You guys help set them up. It's exciting. So Rally Day is a time when we get to celebrate, but I also love Rally Day because it marks the beginning of our ministry year. Some of our ministries, not all, but some of our ministries um, decide to take the summer off, kind of like the school district. And so Rally Day marks the beginning of the ministry year. And so children's ministry starts up next Sunday. Youth ministry starts back up. Um, and some Christian education opportunities start back up. So it's a really exciting time of the year. And so we want to celebrate. We celebrate um, especially the Christian education of our children and our youth beginning. But friends, it's not just about children and youth. It's about all of our Christian education because it's so important and that's why we have Bibles on our altar, which is a sacred space. But the Holy Word of God is sacred because it teaches us who God is, what God is doing in the world, and how we can be a part of that, how we can be a part of God's vision in the world. And so scripture is very important. It teaches us really important lessons, one of which we get to learn today. The lesson that Jesus teaches us today will turn our world upside down and change our very lives. It starts with Jesus on his way back to Galilee. So Jesus, we saw last week, was in Gentile lands. And so he's been going through all these different Gentile lands and is finally coming home. And when you finally come home, all your family wants to come and see you, right? family and friends. So Jesus is going to have this big group of people come to see him. And Jesus says, I'm not ready yet. I have to tell you something. So he tells the disciples, don't let anybody know I'm home yet. Just a minute. And so he takes his disciples and he brings them to a spot away from other people. Because these are the disciples that Jesus knows are going to continue his ministry after he leaves and he knows are going to start the Christian church. So he has something very, very important to tell them. So he says, don't tell anybody. Come on over here and I'm going to give you this really important message. And he tells them that he is going to die by human hands. And on the third day, he'll rise from the dead. And you would think that the disciples would have been stunned or would have, would have said something. But instead... They remained silent. Perhaps they remained silent because they were shocked. They were absolutely shocked at what Jesus had told them. Maybe they remained silent because they were scared. I mean, they just learned that Jesus was going to die. Or perhaps they were silent because they didn't want to be the one to raise their hand and admit they had no idea what Jesus was talking about. 
maybe their ego got in the way of them truly being, being able to hear what Jesus has to say and admit that they didn't understand it or that they were afraid of it. So instead, they remained silent. And then they got up and they started walking to Capernaum. And on the way, you would think that they would talk about what Jesus just told them set them aside, said he had something really important to tell them. You think that they would be talking about that, but we find out they're not. They're talking about which one of them is going to be the greatest, which one of them is the best of the best. Now, if it was me, thank God I'm not Jesus, friends, because if it was me, I would have gotten so angry at them, and I probably would have yelled at them. I probably would have said, seriously? I just told you I was going to die and resurrect. That should blow your mind. You should be talking about that. And instead, you're freaking out over which one of you is the best? Really? But Jesus, because he's so much smarter than I am, figures out that this is what's called a teachable moment. Now, all of you teachers out there, thank you for teaching me what a teachable moment is. Teachable moment is a moment that the Holy Spirit brings us that just fits perfectly with the point we're trying to make. And it's a great teacher that can notice a teachable moment and take advantage of it. And that's exactly what Jesus does today. He figures this is a teachable moment. So instead of getting mad, he sets the disciples down and he tells them, those who are the least will become the greatest and will be servants of all. So if you think about it, who are the greatest? And we learned from James a few weeks ago that the value system that we have, the greatest, is the rich, the powerful. In Jesus' time, it would have been men, uh, it would have been Greco-Roman citizens. Uh, so they were at the top. They were the greatest. And who are the least? Well, honestly, widows and orphans. We'll talk about um, orphans in a minute. But widows, because remember, men were at the top. And so if you were a woman who had no family and no spouse to support you and help you, you were pretty much nothing. And so at the very bottom, the least are orphans and widows. And that's why in the New Testament, we hear Paul and Jesus constantly telling this, this new Christ-following church to care for orphans and widows because they are the least. And so what Jesus does is take this idea of who is the greatest and who is the least, just like those disciples were trying to figure out who gets to be up here. Jesus goes like this. And Jesus turns the value system upside down. And he says, the least will be greatest and servant of all. So Jesus flips the world of the disciples upside down and changes their life forever. And then, in his absolute brilliance, Jesus takes a child and puts it among the disciples. Now, what's interesting about this is back in that time, children hung out with women because women had the food. So the children would hang out with the women. So why there was a child among the disciples, either there was women that were present there or the child was a servant. And as Jesus said, the least will be servants of all, it's most likely that that child was a servant. So the child had come to serve the disciples something, and Jesus had taken this child, which was a servant. Now, in Greco-Roman times, um, they were very different than ours in how we understand children. So in Greco-Roman times, children were known as a non-entity. They were like, nothing. They weren't even a human. Because the problem with children is they couldn't earn money. They couldn't work in the fields. They couldn't do anything. They literally just lived off of the family. They took more than they gave to the family. So they were non-entities until children could earn. 
until children could, could become profitable. And so really, they didn't become entities until adulthood, which is why in the Greco-Roman culture, when, they, uh, when a man didn't have an heir for all of his property, he didn't adopt a child, he would adopt an adult. Because he knew that adult was prosperous, was able, and could take care of his family. So he would adopt an adult. So children were non-entities. So Jesus not only took a servant and put it among the disciples, he took a non-entity and put it among the disciples. He held it in his arms, and he said, those who welcome one such as this. Isn't that brilliant? One such as this. A non-entity and a slave. One who welcomes one such as this welcomes me. Jesus just compared himself to a child slave. The lowest of the low. Jesus says, and you not only welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me. Jesus compares a non-entity slave to God. Takes the world and turns it upside down and changes the way we see the world. Can you imagine the disciples going out into the Greco-Roman world and seeing how they treated children? after Jesus just compared himself and the one who sent him to children, they had to be absolutely appalled at how children were being treated in that time. And so as we go out into the world today, I ask you, has the world turned? Has our value system turned? What are some ways that our value system, that our world still needs to turn. Because let's be honest, it's scary. For those of us who are up here, who are the greatest, let's be honest, we've worked hard to be up here. We've worked really hard to be up here, and we deserve to be the greatest. But as Jesus teaches us today, the world is going to turn. The value system is going to turn. And in order for those children servants to have status to have value we might have to give up some of ours so that this world can turn as jesus teaches which is why learning about the scripture is so important it was difficult back in jesus time and it's still difficult today to hear these messages that might make us really uncomfortable as jesus tries to turn the world in the direction god calls us to live it might make us uncomfortable but it's an important lesson to learn and that's why we celebrate rally day we celebrate christian education for our children for our youth but also for us so this covenant Bible study is eight weeks, and it's a great opportunity to delve into this Bible and these scriptures, to ask the difficult questions, not be afraid like the disciples and stay silent, to ask the difficult questions, because faith, friends, is not a destination. It's a journey. And so often I hear, oh, but I'm so new on my journey. I'm not going. There are people there who have been in Bible study for years. Noni Gardner might show up, guys. She's like the walking Bible. And I say amen to that. There's a lot we can learn from that wisdom. So whether we're new on our path, whether we've been on our journey for a while, all are welcome, as we sang. Because scripture is something that we constantly learn about, which is why we celebrate Rally Day. Scripture is so important. So I encourage all of us this ministry year to try out at least one Christian education opportunity because Scripture is so important to our understanding of who God is, what God is doing in the world, and how we can be a part of it. Amen.
Let us confess before God and one another our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are invited to sit or kneel for the prayers. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all wisdom, thank you for all the teachers and mentors you put in our lives to help us on our journey of faith. Humble our hearts to the value system you teach us, even if that means we have to give up status so that others can be lifted up. God, in your mercy, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters, especially California, Oregon, Louisiana, Florida, Haiti, Indonesia, and all places who are striving to recover. God, in your mercy, Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Bless all those fleeing Afghanistan with loving and open arms of those awaiting their arrival. Bless those in the Middle East who are living in fear. Move the hearts of the Taliban to listen to the concerns of those lifting their voices in protest so that peace can be found. As we continue to see violence escalate in the Middle East, God, call all leaders to strive for peace. Lord, in your mercy. You accompany those who are most in need. Sean Conrad, Charles Roward, Bonnie McShay, Gary, Bob Toy, Pastor Mack, the Bliley family as they mourn the death of Richard Bliley, and friends of St. Paul's. Bishop Lozano, Butch, Liz, Ron, Alex, Robin, Rick, Tony, Becky, David, Chris, Christopher, Sammy, Ben, and Jane Ann. And for those we name aloud in our hearts, on our lips, or in our hearts. God, in your mercy, you gather this community together, Father. Shape our life together with humility and love that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Bless all the teachers and shepherds who will teach your holy word to our children and youth. God, in your mercy, Receive these prayers, O God, that those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are invited to stand. 
The greeting of peace is symbolic of reconciliation and community. We share the peace of Christ by bowing or holding up the peace sign to one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. E.T. Peace. We are invited to be seated and we'll have a mu special musical offering. <laughs>
blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possess possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God who gives us the gift of God's holy word to help and guide us through life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise God's name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Those of you who are comfortable are invited to come down the center aisle and get bread. Uh, you'll go back to your seats on the outer aisle. If you're not comfortable coming up, that's totally fine. Go ahead and take communion at your own seats. The white disc on the top is your bread, and then you open a second time, and that's your grape juice. So come, for the meal is prepared. You may be seated. The body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ...
we are invited to stand. Fed and strengthened by your holy word and holy meal, God, send us forth to be your people in the world, proclaiming your truth this day and forevermore. Amen. Receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Kids are invited to come forward and get shakers. This kind? Or? No. This one. in peace you are the body of Christ thanks be to God